Hello everybody and welcome to How to See Make Good Part 0A. This is the first installation of hopefully many. Before beginning, check the video description for any errata for this video that might be helpful when watching. I was originally going to talk in a more theoretical, conceptual level, but I decided instead to start with something practical. And in this video we'll talk about how to install CMake. That may seem pretty basic and not that exciting, but this is actually made for the Linux users. That's right, the people who have all their installations all sorted out. Well, not CMake. There's this pervasive idea that keeps people from installing new CMake versions, and I think it's mostly just a case of not knowing how easy it is to get the new CMake versions on their Linux boxes. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull, pull over my terminal window, and I'm going to see what CMake version I have. I have 3.11.4. This is actually an old version. The current version out right now is uh, 3.12.0. So I'm going to go download that right now. So let me pull up a browser window. We'll go to cmake.org. We'll click on the download page and scroll down a little bit and you'll see the installer for the latest version right here. There's a Windows and a Mac OS installer. Those are fairly straightforward. I'm not going to be going over them as much because it's pretty easy to use them. Uh, make sure that when it, if it prompts you to add CMake to your path that you accept this and you install it for the current user or all users. It doesn't matter which because that's important for running CMake from the command line, which we'll be doing later. So, in the Linux section, you can see there's this sh and there's this tar.gz. Now, if I go into my terminal and I say apt search CMake, oh, like this, you can see right here CMake from Xenial Updates, because I'm running a Ubuntu 16.04 based system. The latest version available is 3.5.1 from the app sources. That's not the newest version, of course. So a lot of what I see is that Linux users will rely on using the, the version of CMake packaged from their upstream sources. And this is not required. It's very easy to get the latest version, and that's what I'm going to go over. So. You'll note that I'm running 3.11.4, which is not the same as 3.5.1, and I do not have this CMake package installed right now. I'm not using it. I'm using one I downloaded from the CMake download site earlier, a few months ago. So I'm going to go ahead and download this file, the CMake 3.12.0 Linux x86.64 shell script, not the tar.gz. So, and we'll, well, I'll talk about why we want that one. I'm going to copy that link. I'm going to go over here. I'm going to curl. You see, I'd done this earlier. I'm going to curl that file and I'm going to write it to cmake.sh. And that will download. It'll take a second, so I'll just skip forward. So now I have a local copy of that cmake sh shell script. And I'll open it up in Vim so we can take a look and see what's inside. And. It looks like a regular shell script. You'll see this mention of a thing called CPack. That's actually a component of CMake that is used for packaging and installation. And we'll talk about that later. And you can see it looks like a regular shell script has some options. And you can see, hmm, here's the license for CMake. Here's a list of contributors. Uh, some more licensing sponsorship notes. Uh, then some branching. Do do do. And eventually, you find this enormous blob of random-looking data. And as you can see from this text, it's start of tar.gz file. So the tarball that we saw on the download page is actually embedded in this shell script right here. And this shell script knows how to extract it from the command line. So this is a self-extracting shell script. So I'm going to close Vim. And if we run that shell script and say help, you can get a few options. If we ask for the version, its version is 
which is the latest version and the version I downloaded. So to do the install, well, I'm going to just say dash dash prefix equals the current directory slash cmic test install. And it prompts me for a license agreement. And then I say, yes, I accept that license. It asks if I want to include this subdirectory right here, and that's important. I'm going to say yes for now, but we'll say no later. And it did the extraction. And if I open up that directory, you can see here is that CMIC test install that I installed to. Go to this view and click that. And you see bin, which includes the CMIC binaries, some doc and man pages, and share, including some external or extra package data. And this is a regular Linux installation structure. So what we can do is we can retarget the shell script to install this globally. And that's pretty easy. Um, it's important to see this subdirectory right here, which is not something we want in the actual installation. So we're going to set an option to turn that off. Let's close that for now. And I'm going to blow up that directory. I don't need it. So there that goes. So I'm going to run this again. Instead of that prefix, I'm going to prefix it to user local. And it's important to use user local and not regular slash user because this package is not managed by the global system package manager. And the Linux specification tells us that packages which are not managed by the system should go in user local. And that'll work pretty much like any package you install in slash user. It's just tracked better. So we're going to solve prefix user local, and to get rid of that subdirectory, we can just say exclude subdir, and it'll put the bin, man, doc, and share files right into user local as we want them. I'm also going to have to say sudo on this, because obviously this requires permissions that we don't have by default. And there, it extracted, it unpacked, and the files are now in user local bin. And there's the CMake that we just installed. And if I say version on it, you can see it installed 3.12, exactly like we expected. And it's on my path, of course. So we have CMake 3.12. We have CMake GUI 3.12. We have them all. All the binaries that it needed to, or that we wanted it to install are there. And this is how I prefer to install CMake on Linux because the upstream packages are often very out of date and there's no real downside to installing these updated versions and there's a lot of upsides. So if you're relying on your upstream package maintainers to package and ship you the latest CMake versions, you're not going to get them. Unless you're on a rolling distro like Archer Gentoo, you're going to have to find these shell scripts and run them yourself or build from source, which isn't hard but more complicated than just running the shell script. So that seemed like a lot to do, but really it was just a single curl command and then a single shell command. That's all we needed to do to install the package. So that's it for this video and look in the description for any addendums, errata, or important links. And in the next one, we'll be talking about the basic CMake user interface.